Welcome back to the Angus Report and our special coverage on the National Beef Quality Audit. And joining me now in the studio is Dr. Keith Belk of Colorado State University, and he's one of the audit's principal investigators. Dr. Belk, can you give us a, an overview of maybe the first initial phase of the research, and that includes some of the face-to-face -face interviewing? Phase one of the National Beef Quality Audit since 1991 has always included a face-to-face -face series of interviews with people in the supply chain of beef downstream from cattle producers, so with packers and retailers and food service and those that process beef products and even with other entities. And the idea is, is to specifically interview people that make purchasing decisions regarding beef. So we're, we're trying to find out what things are important to the people that buy beef between the consumer and the cattleman. And by doing so, then we can help relay information back upstream on things that we can do to maybe make the product more satisfactory and valuable to them. So what were some of those key takeaways that you gained this well, year? Well, this time, food safety has risen to the number one most important thing to all of the people downstream from cattle producers. This is something that didn't even show up in the first audit, the 1991 audit. And so we, you know, as meat scientists, we don't think as food safety as being beef quality, but nevertheless, that's what the customers are saying. And so uh, I think the industry's done a good job at targeting and working towards improving safety of beef, but it's clearly something we need to continue to work on uh, to help reduce liability for our customers downstream. Uh, the second thing that's most important, I believe, is that uh, the number of branded beef programs is continue, continuing to increase. Uh, that's important because it helps indicate that we're doing things that are sort of novel and creative in terms of reaching new types of maybe niche type cons consumers, and so that's important. The third thing is that uh, all of the, the folks downstream that make purchasing decisions told us that they're, they're more of them are willing to pay a premium to receive quality attributes that are important to them. So a greater number of people are willing to pay more for quality attributes. The downside to that is compared to 2011, they're willing to pay less. So we have more people paying more for quality attributes, but they're willing to pay a less, lesser amount for it. So that's important in a couple ways because that affects what's able to be transmitted back upstream to cattle produc producers and by the way of profit. Uh, the third thing that's important is tenderness and flavor are still the most important attributes of beef products. Uh, that came out loud and clear. That's what addresses our um, dollars charged per satisfaction issue that we, we try to reach with consumers. It, it's one of the, the primary demand drivers for beef, and so we need to make sure that we still keep tenderness and flavor in our sites. The next thing that was important is that we need to um, address downstream as a weakness, the fact that consumers really aren't engaged with producers anymore. Um, we've, we've moved so far away in our society from agricultural production, you know, something like 2% of the, the, the people produce 100% of the food sort of concept. And so we need to figure out new and creative ways to truly address this disconnect that the public has with our production practices and be more aggressive in how we do that. As a part of that, BQA in and of itself was something that most of our customers didn't understand. They didn't know we had those programs in place and um, I think that that's something we could use as a marketing tool to help retailers and food service operators and other people downstream understand that cattlemen care about what they're producing. and so. Um, this is a tool that we could perhaps use maybe to bridge part of that gap in the disconnect between consumers and producers. And then lastly, one of the things that was mentioned quite frequently was that we're about to go through a sort of a paradigm shift in technology that's available to cattlemen. Um, sort of on the cusp of new quantitative and molecular genetics capabilities, now we're going to have this capability of gene editing. And quite a few of our customers downstream mentioned the fact that that has potential to change the industry in a big way because we can basically edit new genes into uh, cattle that either make them perform more efficiently or that perhaps make them more desirable to consumers. And so that's something that's going to affect the industry going forward. 
And so um, let's take a look at the second phase of the process, and that's some of the implant um, kind of harvest research. Give us a walkthrough of that and some of the key findings you've it quickly, uh, so we do two pieces in that study. We have what we call the harvest assessment, where we go into plants and we have a lot of graduate students that are outside in the holding pens of plants and they evaluate cattle as they arrive at the facility and what sorts of attributes are associated with them. And then we have a team that's on the inside of the plant that does what we call the cooler assessment, and that's where they're evaluating the carcasses of the, in the plants that we've evaluated. We sampled about 30 plants this time in, across the United States, and that covers over 90% of the production. And so we've covered a big cross-section of all the cattle that are produced in the United States. Uh, one of the big things that we found that we think is very important to tell cattlemen is, is that their efforts to improve quality grade appear to be working because our um, our quality grades have improved dramatically, particularly the percentage of cattle that are grading prime and choice. Um, that's over 71% now, and that's up significantly when you go back and look at all the way back to 1991 and 1995. One of the opportunities we have, though, is as a consequence, perhaps, of higher quality grading cattle, we've actually declined in terms of our composition measurement. And so the cattle are yielding, yield grading at a higher number, meaning that they're um, we're producing a little bit lower yield in terms of carcasses than, than what we did in 2011. And so we have to figure out how to offset those things. But in terms of losses to the industry, those are basically a wash. The number of cattle that uh, uh, had horns declined. The number of brands on the hides of cattle, which detracts from the value of hides, uh, diminished. Um, we. Uh, we actually re reduced the number of cattle that, that had identification on them, and so that could be a problem going forward that we might want to talk about over the next five years. Uh, and then one of the primary differences from the 2011 audit is we went from about 5% of the, the consist of the industry being dairy or Holstein-like cattle to over 20% being dairy cattle this time. And so there was a big jump in the number of the fed beef supply that are contributed by the dairy industry. And so we're gonna, we don't know what all that means to, to things so far, but um, that could be contributing to the all fall condemnation problems that we've seen. So Dr. Belk, throughout these phases, phase one and two and all the research that was gathered, what are some of those um, lost opportunities that might be available to the industry? Well, every, every time we conduct one of these audits, we make a computation of what the industry is losing for every steer and heifer slaughtered that we think we could make momentum towards capturing or recapturing back into the industry. And that value was up a little bit this time from the 2011 audit. Mostly, there was, a, there was increased value because of, so a reduction in, in costs associated with quality grading. There was a loss because of our yield grades changes, uh, but really those were a wash in terms of value to the industry, and so the main thing affecting us right now really is all fall condemnations. We need to figure out some ways to start reducing some of the condemnations we're losing from variety meats and byproducts associated with cattle. Thanks so much, Dr. Belk, for your time and insight and all the years of research that really goes into the quality audit. It's time for us to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll be joined by Dr. Dan Niffen, a seed stock producer and chair of the National BQA Advisory Board. We'll return after this.